It's a bonus episode of the Expat Life Germany podcast. Welcome to it. Last week's guest was Anna Noakes Schulze, who is a serial expat and TEDx talker. And if you haven't listened to the episode yet, you really, really should. She described our chat best when she shared the episode on her social media channels. And I quote Anna here. In this post-TEDx interview, Sean gets me to spill about the strange and wonderful experience of living abroad, shifting identity, culture shocks are plenty, fitting in, trying to or not, kids versus career, special needs, social speeds, and the role of Visigoths in the caring professions. Now, I had to edit out parts of my discussion with Anna for the episode last week, but I felt that it would be a shame for those bits to go to waste, since Anna has so much insight and wisdom. So I decided to put some of the cut content into a bonus episode. And here we are. Now, before I start, just a reminder that this show is switching to a Monday rhythm from next week. So the next episode will be in your feeds on Monday. But now let's get into the bonus episode. In the episode, Anna and I discussed social media at length, and we talked about the benefits of social media for expats and also a, b a bit about the negative aspects. But Anna had a bit more to say than what ended up in the episode. Oh, you know, there's something else I wanted to mention about taming Facebook or ring fencing it in some way. Um, there's a lot of unintentional hurt that occurs in Facebook when people think you are not aware of something important that happened to them or you ignored yeah. something that happened to them. Yeah. And this is, I, I just wanted to explain a little bit of a digression. The reason I'm using these notifications is because you don't miss anything, whereas your feed It, you only see a fraction of what people are putting out there. So you cannot depend on your feed for anything that's important. The feed has to be all the incidental stuff. But the notifications mean you will not miss it when something important happens. And and people will, if you're on Facebook and your, your, your loved ones, or relatives, whoever, friends are on Facebook, they expect that you're aware of what's going on in their life. And if you depended on your feed, you would not be aware and you would have friction. You would just miss it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You would miss it. So it's such a, it's such a minefield, isn't it? It and is. I'm, I'm having that problem now with Instagram where um, you can only follow so many people or so many pages and, and then it just becomes a blur and there's so much advertising and sponsored posts in there. And uh, I haven't, I haven't figured out how to tame Instagram the way that I've tamed uh, Facebook. And, and I don't know what the answer is that do you just accept that everything's hit and miss like a Twitter, Twitter, uh, stream going by. Yeah. Twitter's, Twitter's, Twitter's a whole different ball game as well. That's, that's a whole, uh, that's a that's whole, a whole different level. volume game there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, yeah. You know, my feeling is it's just, it's, it is getting to be too much. And I've, I've tried to, uh, I try to figure out ways to use things like Facebook to foster connections, especially with groups that I'm involved in bearing in mind that there's only so much time for that. But right now, to be honest, I'm getting a lot more satisfaction out of LinkedIn because LinkedIn is all about ideas and, and your professional life. And it's actually really, really satisfying uh, finding common ground over ideas. And that and LinkedIn is where that's really happening. I agree. I agree. It's a whole, it's a, it's, it's a whole different kind of uh, social media, but it's actually for, and I worry about it because I sometimes see, certain posts and I see the advertising creeping in there as well. So I, I just wonder how long it's going to oh, last. That's right. I hope that they can, you know, keep so, sort of hold on to the good thing that they've got going. But uh, yeah, for now, it's an amazing tool. And I think part of the advantage of LinkedIn is that most people post infrequently. So you yeah. don't have this barrage of Flood. stuff that you have to get through. You, you can feel yeah. like you're on top of what's happening uh, with LinkedIn a lot easier. Yeah. But you won't find your auntie there or no. <laughs> some of your other relatives. No, no, you won't. <laughs> But it's a different kind of connection and all of these different kinds are important. And I think I think that what you said about um, sort of mentorship and ideas and inspiration, it's, it's far more inspiring than than the other social media platforms because, like you said, because of the ideas and, and the, the concepts that have been put forward there. Yeah, I'm starting to notice a trend, though, even on LinkedIn where people want to do a lot of uh, personal disclosure okay. about their lives or things that they're yeah. going through. And I'm yeah, almost really feeling like it's it, veering it? into Facebook territory. Yeah, that, that's, that's unfortunate. As an expat, Anna volunteers with American International Women's Clubs. 
Here is what she has to say about the connections that that fosters and also the effects of charity work on her expat life. And for me, the thread in every single foreign country that I've lived in, except for the United States, is I've always done volunteering with the American International Women's Clubs. And that satisfied a lot of different needs I had, not just uh, social connection and activities, but also um, uh, charity activities as well, and sort of being aware of what's going on, where you live, and where you can make a difference. And that's mm-hmm. that's been huge for me. Um, as I said, I, I did my best to have a completely normal career and uh, <laughs> family commitments have intervened somewhat. Right. And when there were times, for example, a six month period, uh, just about three years ago, where I had 90 child related appointments in a span of six months. Yeah. There were crazy. times like that when um, a- digital agencies reached out to me on LinkedIn and I just knew that I couldn't take a full time career because what would happen with all those intervention meetings and various things that I was going to, it wasn't possible. And to to sort of bridge my need to contribute, I was doing a lot of volunteering and and I did enjoy it and I did make a difference to the people around me. But what I find is you have to be really, really careful with volunteer organizations because they are so notorious for burning people out. They generally need all the help that they can get. Yeah. And, so when they have when they have hands on board, they kind of just use them as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and yeah. so what I've noticed is that anytime you start feeling resentful or underappreciated in a volunteer situation, it means you're doing too much or you're doing the wrong thing, and it's it's time for a change. And I actually came across something. I was reading a book called Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins, very smart man, very long, boring book, highly repetitive, but he's a very smart man. And one of the things that he talks about is that the kind of outcomes you get in your life are a function of the quality of question you ask yourself. So the question that I was always asking myself was, how can I serve others? And it's not a bad question at all. It's a pretty good one, actually, um, if you want to make a difference. But one day I realized that a far better question would be, how can I serve others in a way that maximizes the benefit to them and to myself? Yeah. And that's a new question. And that's when I realized that I couldn't just do volunteering because often I was spending my time doing things that others could do just as well as I could, if not better, and that it wasn't necessarily making a huge difference, that I was just giving away time that I didn't maybe didn't even really have. Um, And that's when I became much more engaged in recharging my professional life um, and and sort of rebuilding my knowledge base and reaching out and making connections, not just socially, but professionally too, and getting more involved in my professional life to the extent that I can now that things have sort of settled down with my boys and they're getting older and they seem to be doing well. And so now I've got some exciting things coming up. For example, I'm going to be um, a judge at the International Customer Experience Awards in Amsterdam later this year. And I am massively, massively excited about that. And and I can't wait. Uh, And I'm so much happier now um, that I've put time and energy into that. And so it's, you know, you can't help other people if you're not looking after yourself. And I had years of chronic back pain as well that had to be attended to. So I really felt like I had it coming from all sides. But there comes a point where you have to decide there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so much energy available. What am I going to spend it on? And then really, really think about that and spend it the best way you can in the way that's the most fulfilling so that you don't look back later and have any regrets. So you de- you have to take care of yourself, no matter how many other people you're taking care of or what they need, because it's basically, it's true what the flight attendants say. You have to put your own oxygen mask on first. The last soundbite that I have from my interview with Anna starts off with her discussing South Africans and ends up with her thoughts on why she is not afraid to make connections with people, regardless of how long they'll be in her life. I, so you, you might you don't know this I'm quite sure but I worked with quite a few South Africans uh, in the huh? digital agency scene in London early in my marriage 
And um, all nice people, of course, the South Africans. Yeah, they were lovely, actually. Can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I really got a sense from them of the flow northward and then southward. Almost all of them who were in London at you know ten years ago are back in South Africa now, and some have moved on to you know Los Angeles, for example, or other places. Yeah. But yeah. just the South African community alone gave me a real clear picture of this 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 flow. Maybe because of a career, maybe because of love, maybe because of you know, a sense of adventure, but just people yeah. moving through the world, sometimes coming back or sometimes moving on to another place. And it's a, it's a yeah. very fluid situation. Yeah. And it's also something I find of expats in general. You've you got to be careful who you make friends with around you because quite often those people disappear. And uh, as you say, they're, the, the danger with expats is they're either disappearing onto the next country that they're seeking an adventure in or they're going back home for whatever reason. That's that's actually a huge theme. I hadn't I hadn't really thought about that until you mentioned it, but I've known quite a few people where I've been warned they will not get to know you if they feel there's a chance you might leave. So, for example, the uh you know, I know a few w women uh, in my area who are long-term expats married to Germans. And those ones are a special group because they all have reasonable assurance that the others are going to stick around. But if you're here on a temporary assignment, or even if you're here for a permanent position, but you know it could change later, there are people who are really, really cautious about that. And I've actually gotten gone completely in the opposite direction, where I don't care how long we have, because every person that I've known on this little journey has influenced me in some way and and i feel enriched me and obviously it it hurts terribly when you move and you don't stay in touch with somebody who was important with you, with for you or they don't stay in touch with you but for me the experience of knowing that person is not to be missed and so i've i've you know i put myself out there and 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 i don't mind if it's only temporary because i guess i've i've sort of come to feel that well almost everything is temporary to some extent or another. And so I don't, I don't close myself off to people who are, you know, relatively short term uh, assignments, but you know, not everybody feels that way. Other people are sure. more concerned with protecting themselves. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. Visit Anna's website, sunflowerux.com to get in touch with her. If you have any questions for Anna, you can ask her directly on the Expat Life Germany Facebook group. You can check out other episodes on expatlifegermany.de, follow me on Instagram, expatlifegermany, and on Twitter, expatlifede. Until next week, auf Wiederhören.